Does anyone know what a round table is? I'm sure a lot of folks have done that. You have a round table when you don't have a quorum. But you can't vote on spending any money on a round table. That's pretty much the only difference. You can still kind of conduct business as opposed to what you want to look forward to next month, things like that. But you cannot vote to spend money if you don't have a quorum. That's a round table. That's not in the book, but... <coughs> hey, look real quick while the Chiefs going through District 1 is here, right? Raise your hand. District 1. Nobody? 2. Oh, we got 1. Yeah, we got 1. 2 is here. 3. We got a lot of 3s here. 4. 4. 4 is four. here. 5 is here. 6 is here. 7 is here. 8. 9. Yep, yep, Jim, nine. Jim, nine. Yeah. <laughs> Ben's here. We're in, we're in the house. Ben. Eleven's here. And Twelve. District twelve. Yep, we've got twelve back there. They come a long way. Hillsboro area? So the church off. So every district's here, so that, that's that's great. That's really awesome. Uh, we did this back in when, when was it? August at my post in Newark. Uh, so I tried to take it a little farther north this, this time, but the farther I got to north, the more no's I got, because COVID is worse. They're, bank, they're halls, they can't even do their own bingo yet, so then I started coming back south, and this is where we're at today. So we're going to try to move it around. This is a little bigger turnout than what we had at the last one, so I do appreciate everyone coming. Thanks. Ready? Hello. Good morning, comrades. How many quartermasters we have out here today? How many new ones? Well, I'll tell you what. Being a quartermaster is the hardest job at the post and the most respected. Because you are the person that everybody sees about every day in post quartermaster. You're in there about every day, so thank you for your job. Because you've got the hardest job at the post. And you probably know that. How many of you got have logged in to the BFW website? I'm talking about the national website. Everybody logged in. Nobody haven't logged in. That's a good thing. You've got to put the post where they haven't logged in yet and the slightest idea what to do. So we're going to go on to the national website first. I'm going to tell you where the hand out is. Hand out is. So, online membership. Everybody knows how to get on online membership. Okay. Go on down from way to the left where it says online box. What your hand out has in your book, this is where they got it at. Go on to BMW training and support. The first window there on, on your right here. Remember officer training. Go all down to that. You can, these are all good information, pieces of information. Keep going. You, I do the commander guide for you commander. That's in the book. So, you know, you want to know more about your job here, there's the commander guide. Go on down. This is where it's in the handout, the hand the quartermaster guide. 93 pages, a lot of information. Now, I'm not going to go through the handout, but we'll be here all day. So probably go through every page. But it's a, and I'll open this up to questions. It's probably better for you to ask me questions than try to stand up here and read 93 pages. And this is the quartermaster guide. Any question yet? Okay, let's go back to where it says the uh, home page on OMS. Okay, go into reporting. Okay. Post query. Okay, this is what I, this is probably the, the main page everybody looks at is the 
You want to see who can pay your dues. They tell you right here, this is my post. You can see where I have how many life members, how many new members, how many reinstated this year, how many new life. Everything that's, 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 that's your post. Has everybody been to this page and understand? That's good. It might be an easy job for me today. Um, yes. Can you go ahead and get us to where we can find our membership um, list? Okay, membership list? Go over here to the total, 311. All right, so I click on that and I'll show you all 311 members. Yeah. You can go in here, you can go down here where it says inspect roster. That tells you all unpaid members for a couple of years. Or you can go up there where it says, there's a list of all your members. And you as the board of us is the only one can do this. Unless you give your password to the post commander. What's the reason for that? Well, why, because why the commander get there. Well, I tell you what, because you go in there, if you want to change somebody's address, if you want to change somebody, uh, we go their, their membership. If you give it to the commander, he, he, yeah, he can do things that you don't want done. Now, if you've got a good commander, you can work side to side. My commander, he does have my password. But without giving up the password, which is a bad thing, why couldn't the website be set up that allows the commander to log in and not make changes? He, he can log in. Every commander can log in on their own home page and see stuff. They can't move anything around. As a quartermaster, you're the only one who can change people's address, put somebody new member in, deceive some member and all that as a quarterback. Unless you give your password to the commander or right, somebody else, assistant quartermaster, then that person can do that too. Myself, you've got to make sure before you do that, before you give your password away. But I know that person. Uh, I go up for the memory today, but everybody knows, is there any questions here? Uh, I hate to, you know, Talk about something everybody understands, you know. I'd rather talk about something that you need to know. Yes, sir. I just wanted to know that uh, list. Um, is the quartermaster to provide a list to the commander of Farmers West? Yes. I think at my post meeting, meeting, I go down here, scroll down a bit, Mr. John, the other way up, I guess. See what it says? Fire remember? A lot of times I'll print that out. And pass it out to the membership. I'll say, hey, any phone has in the post meeting. You know these members haven't paid their dues yet. You know them. So we can call them. Yes. And, and another thing I have is there are lists that have the actual uh, conflict that the veteran was involved with. That, that won't show up here. It won't show. It won't show. What I do at my own post, I have a spreadsheet my own post. When I bring a new member in, I put him in. I put him in what? Conflict he was in, what year? Because my post, anybody that turns 80 years old or older, if they're an annual member, my post paid for. So I can go back to my own spreadsheet, and every year about July and August, every member that hadn't paid is 80 years old or younger, I pay their dues. And we have a bylaw to address that, so I don't do it on my own. Uh, on request, you would give your commander that. Well, yeah, he wants it, but he, he, what I'm saying is, um, why not? I mean, you you want to be hundred percent. So if he had that list, not only can you call him, he can call him and and see what's going on with that member. Why well, hadn't he paid his dues or anything? Well, the reason why I'm asking, you know, is that we uh, at one of the meetings we wanted to know how many World War II veterans we had. Okay. So. Well, we asked him and it was like a whole description. See the age know. right here? Click on that age right there, John. Up here at the age. And that's short zone. Now scroll down. There's all the aging. Now you can tell if anybody 90 years old or older, it's World War II more like a tribute for your old veteran there. See what I mean? If you click on any highlight, you can sort them. Yes, sir. Chuck, on, uh, we haven't talked about it a couple times with our post. On unpaid uh, expiring officers, keep an eye on that. Yes. 
come over here. I think a district officer can. 
I or the parking that. officer can. I don't know if he can. I, I understand that you can do it. Let me, let me try. I knew when I was a council administration, I could, but I don't think I'd propose to board members like this. I, I, I don't know, Jim, unless you can. I didn't know you could. Jim, yeah, try it. Right. What do you want? Where we go at, Jim? Department query. See, I don't have that. I post board members. We have that. Post no, but we do as a I, as a department officer. You do. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. And I knew I could run the next yeah, council. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, the other the other week, I had a um, undeceased Sorry. member, but national deceased. Mm -hmm. So you we know, so I had to call national and the nerve. To get them reinstated, yeah. Um, but on the national site, does it keep a list anywhere of members they deceased? Because I know last year they deceased what quite a few people. Um, Go back into uh, the reports there, of course. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is low. Yeah. Yeah, your photos there show all the deceased members deceased this year. So but we don't have so we can't go back and double check. Check. Already lost this year. We can't go back and double check. Because they deceased because his, his address was a PO box. So because at first he was undeliverable, yeah. and then I guess because they weren't delivering anything to the PO box, then they deceased him. It was a life member. And he was still alive. Well, in national, once a year, they've been doing it for the last five years. Every year, national, they go in and they see a lot of these members that have been 90 some year old and they're like members. They're like members because national, what, they don't want to pay that money back to post that member has been deceased. So they go to a, a, a search, like a search attorney uh, website and they see a name, it might say John Doe or deceased him. But there's a lot of John Doe's out there. So if you know John Doe from your post is alive, you gotta call the national and put that so they can put that number back in. They do that once a year. But do we get a list of the ones that are doing that too? Well there's an individual post or yeah they should send they send you a letter and let you know which one they're going to see. Okay. And you have to you have to call them within so many days to verify that they're not. On, on that note there, I've never received a letter from a deceased member, ever. And every, every, I just looked them up, I got two members on my website right now with undeliverable addresses who haven't moved in 90 years. And they're still alive. I, you know, just looking it up, I guarantee you the National's already deceased them, which I know they're still alive. I'd be calling National for first day Monday. The problem is I go through this every year. It's two to five people, anybody over the age of 80, they just go ahead and cease. Now, I just called on to this three years ago what they were doing. I probably have 15, 20 members that are no longer on my list, don't have a way to really backtrack from five or six years ago to see if they were actually members or not. Well, on his note there, yeah. the exact same note, they na they naturally deceased these people. Yes, they do. I've never received a letter stating that. Yeah, they sent a letter out, I don't know. I've never received one, have you? I've never. Okay. That they, they deceased this person. And I just looked it up five minutes ago, I got two on here that are still alive, are now undeliverable, they're both over the age of 80, and I guarantee you they haven't moved. Well, they haven't moved, you need to call me and say, I had an officer last year that got deceased. I had to, yeah, I know. I know, I know. it happens. And I part of it, you guys need to fix that. It's my opinion. That's not I've what happened. I've called me and said, they didn't deceased them. No, they didn't. But to answer your question, you need to call me and give them the correct answer. And that's what I've had to do, but if it's not called, I'm no longer post commander. He takes over. He has no clue. You're going to go two or three years of members that are no longer in the VFW because they have no clue that they've been deceased. Most of them don't realize, oh, I haven't got my VFW man. Well, yeah. They don't realize that. Two years ago, they deceased a lot of members. Mm -hmm. And when B.J. Lawrence was actual commander, he put them all back in. And he gave a letter out to all the posts. Said, you have so many days to verify they're alive or not. And to let them know. And I've never, I've never received a letter. Okay, I, Either one, I can't remember both. I think it went to the report of that, I can't remember. I don't know how to look at that. As a commander, okay. Does Herb get a, get a, does Herb get a letter? No, the post does. But for, for being the state quartermaster, he doesn't get a letter of all the members of his state that are being deceased? 
Ceasing a mass. Okay. The same letter that they're supposed to be sending to the post quartermaster. That's the only notice I get from National. If an, if National or a, a post deceases a member or National deceases one member, I don't get notification. I will email Rick Butler Monday. He is the membership director at National, and I'll let him know about this problem. So I, I got a question about deceasing membership. Does that affect? Does that affect your uh, the membership total percentage? Sure does. Yeah, it does. There is traffic for the traffic, traffic. 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 You should be seeing it. Well, well, I, I started my year at 320 members. We gained five. Why am I still short? That'll kind of work. You know, they they do give you a grace period like from July to end of August to decease all your members. It doesn't mess with your your uh, your membership total. Yeah. They do not have amnesty no more. Not oh, they quit that? Yeah. They quit that like two oh, years ago. If you have a really? deceased member who passes away today, you might as well deceased okay. them out and go find you a new member. Right? I, no when, yeah. when we have a deceased member, I, I decease him. Because that, his spouse might not want all that literature coming to him. Check. So you should, when you have a deceased member, go in and decease the member. That amnesty of uh, the National Commander Chief can do it. So that could, right. when he right. comes in, yeah. he could say, I'm getting amnesty this year. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's the discretion of Commander Chief. Yeah. The past few well, years. On, on that email that you're going to send Monday, is it possible to see if we can get the last five years? <laughs> or because if they have a record, I mean, they started it five years ago. And that's my problem. I don't know five years ago. I've never been to the post. I know a little personally. I don't know if they were off my list or not. The only way I can check is to look at my life member board to match up the names. Yeah. It, but it, it, if you're an annual member, I will not have a clue because I don't have a list from five years ago. So. Unless you, myself, every year at the end of the year, and I've been for quite a few years, I download that list and I keep it on my. And I do that now, cross referencing from yeah. year to year. So I'm talking five years ago, yeah. how many members are deceased and are still alive? All right. We're we'll, we'll, we'll going to address it. Okay. Any more questions? Anybody have any questions on this? On this, um, the login and this, what's the quartermaster? OMS. Any questions? All right. Uh, yeah, just just one more. If if National decides to unalive somebody, okay. <laughs> All right, but but it's, it's kind of serious. It's a joke. But if they if they're, if they're going to unalive somebody, and let's say they're a lifetime member. What happens to that membership? Does it still continue, or does it? Is if it you go call away? in and tell them that this member is not deceased, they will put him back in. Okay. Okay. They will. But they need proof. You got to have a name, address, and a good phone number. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. They got it. John, come back in. Has anybody been on their OMJ? What's the question? Oh, yeah, MMJ. Okay. I mean, as a, as a post quartermaster, all you need is a quartermaster. You need a post, you need a, uh, a log into all these, what the life member payout is, so you understand what they are. Take time and look into the, the, like the MMJ. I can tell you last month who, who moved or what happened to a post, a member be, uh, uh, transferred out. It really gives a lot of information. Could you explain the uh, life member payout? Okay. I, I can't really figure what that. Okay, just just click on it. Okay, every year in September and January, you get a check from National for your life membership payout. Now, if you take me, I've been a life member since 1983. My life membership payout is only three dollars. You get that, and the micros get back. Somebody, somebody a life member today might get nine dollars back. And it tells you right here. See, if you're an A, B, C plan or D, E, your post gets more back. I'm a A plan. How do we know? What's that mean? What's a plan? What, what well, when, when you became a life member, 
National decided how much that money will come back. To the how much we were worth at that time? What, yeah, what we were worth. <laughs> we weren't worth much back then. But we didn't pay much for like, remember, I think I only paid for $180. Right? And I was oh, like okay. 30 years old. But 30 years old now, they got paid, what, 470 I was confused. I thought this was something where you could make monthly payments and convert no, some convert some into life. Is what your post going to receive yeah. in January? Uh, okay. so that's the money that's coming back to us. Yes. Okay. Okay. Does legacy life get yes. larger payments? Yes. Go in your uh, uh, legacy life member payout. You all should be a legacy <laughs> life member. <laughs> yeah. and help national. Give me a grant. You see in my post, we have two legacy life members. The post gets eighteen dollars back to the gold and six dollars for the bronze. So, that helps the post a little bit. Not only that, the legacy life member to be the first change would be one hundred dollars, to be the next change is eight hundred, to be a gold member is uh twelve hundred dollars. On the legacy life the gold to get you life. Yeah. I get my post gets 350 and I'm a gold legacy. My post gets 350. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we did everything. Mike Remember, the Commander Challenge, he just, he just sent this out a couple days ago for your post to get some money back if you. If you read this, it tells you what the, the challenge is for the commander in chief. Every about every so often, you'll see that pop up. There's a uh, it, it was you know put at the top here. It tells you what you know if you uh, if you do a certain thing that month, you begin making a drawing. Sometimes it's worthwhile. Sometimes you give a history rifle away. You show them how to tell what division pull. Post something where it says division one, two, three. Okay. You show them that. Okay, go back into my phone. Going into the uh, post where are we? It's pretty important to know what division you I got to say that. Go into, scroll on down. John, go into a little bit farther and the mid stack. Yeah. Now, <coughs> now, everybody can see the mid stack. If you have an account through VFW National, you, this, this is what you would see. Every, every VFW member, if they have an account through National, can log in and, and can see, see this page. While he's searching, every post should have my operating plan. See, right here, it, the power of the division. All the divisions listed in it. Yeah, right there, right here, DIV. Scroll down to, uh, just scroll down to 1067. What district is it in? 10. 10. Go down to 10 there, John. Yeah, it goes by district, and it goes by post. <laughs> There's 1067, this Conrad here, he's in Division 1. You must have a lot of membership. Yeah. That's 951 plus no, division. He's in, he's in Division 5. Yeah, we're in the wrong division. Yeah, Division, division five. 5. I get the wrong line. Yeah, he just shrunk the membership. Because if you're in Division 1, you, got, you probably got over 800 members. Yeah. So let, let me explain that division stuff just one little bit further. Uh, Commander Chief does have a, a competition out there for membership, and so do I. It's in this book. But say you're in Division Four, you fall between 246 to 355 members. He's requiring you to be at 114 percent. Does that mean you get an award? No. That Division Four is United States wide, 52 departments. So he might limit that to 10 awards. You might be at 116%, but there may be 10 other posts that are higher than that. That doesn't automatically mean you get just because you're meeting this requirements. Everybody understand that? 
Okay, like I said, med staff, every member in your post can get on that page if they have an account. All the, and usually all you have to do is you have an email and it, it pops up. But that's 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 another information. They also show you you want to see where uh, their district stands. If you want to look at all American, you can go to division status. And especially at being close to the end of the year, you want you're running for all American. I know. Hey, I'm sure you're looking at it quite a bit, don't you? <laughs> so you get into that page and just kind of see where you you stand. You can go close to the bottom by looking at all American. Okay. Anybody have any questions on? I'm almost going to department. Any have any questions on the BFW National website? But all you new core masters, just just click on all this. Get all the information you can. There's a lot of information out there. Okay, John. Let's go into Department of Ohio. Does everybody know how to log into BFW? BFWOA.org. Everybody? Everybody knows how to get in, the, how to log in your last name and membership number. Yeah. Everybody know about the dashboard? Programs, how to put programs. <laughs> so every post in here is in the green, right? <laughs> Man, you're, hey, you're doing okay. <laughs> Should I make a post up for lunch? No, I won't. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Bring up our post, Aurora Post 2629. 2629, okay. District 8. Now, you can't just put the post up here. You don't have to go through it. Okay. 2629. 2629. And put in District 10, say? 8. 8. Let's go over a little bit. District 8. Get both of those here. Oh, well, yeah. you got some green here. You're not incorporated yet. Well, both those first part of the audits were submitted. Yeah, are good. They're good. Yeah. Your audit. Oh, that's the audit. It's not the part of the audit? Yes. They had to be due by July 30th and October 30th. They were both submitted. They call her. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know. But that's how. Hey, while we're on audits real quick, just how, let you know how that works. Those audits are sent to the department, okay? Susan checks them out, stamps them, and that's when that date goes on. No. <laughs> Then they should then they go to John and yeah. John's the one that if, if John says they're good, oh they can put it on. Okay. That's a change this right. year. Because I gave him the authority to not accept one because it's not proper. That was a change. I stand corrected. So that might be why you have an issue with your office. So Get with John. I'm sure if you would have got an email if you had a problem. Mr. Okay, so everybody understands the dashboard how to do programming. As a quartermaster, more more likely you're in the post every day. You know what's happening. You put reports in, maybe not. But also as a district, as a as a, as a member, you can also put in reports for the district. And just don't put in up at the top. Just put in district, don't put in the post number. It shows up zero in. So, any question on the uh, department's website? Okay. Like I said, you quarterback, you got custody of all funds. How many in here sticks around and watch how the main team operates and see how the money is coming in and going out? Everybody understand that? Everybody's in there watching the canteen manager. How many in here does their own taxes at the post? A few. So you do the 990s and the 990t and 941s and 940s. You do all the school taxes. 
I mean, my code, I'm the quartermaster, I do all the tax. <coughs> I do all the school tax, the federal tax, sales tax. Yeah, payroll. Payroll tax. I do it all. Are you automated? I do it the old. You do it the old way. I do it through a higher business gateway. I don't have print books in my code. No, I, I can't afford that. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm the quartermaster for too many years. I don't like to spend any money if I have to. <laughs> okay. This is a high business gateway. So any post quartermaster don't pay the sales tax, you have an accountant, or if you, you know how to do it, go into a higher business gateway at www.ohiobusinessgateway and you can pay your sales tax. Scroll down a little bit more. This up here at the top. This this is your reporter withholding your ninth, your school tax, your state tax, with school states up here. Go down a little bit more. Here's your sales tax. You use or you have to keep one. You go in there, set up an account, and set up an account to your high business gateway and pay your sales tax at your post. They're due the 23rd of each month. Well, where do you get your sales from? Then? From the cash register at your canteen. Well, uh, okay, but like a tab now. Tab okay. okay, yeah, when you go to the, when the canteen manager prints out, you can go, if you have a tab with the tab wizard, you go in, uh, print out sales tax okay, for so that for the you can't do October, November first, you go in and go from October first to October thirty first on your tab with it, print it out, and the quarterback will pay your sales tax. You can post date it ahead, you don't have to pay it right away. Yeah, post date it the twenty second of, of November, so it has to be paid by the twenty third. See, I have to just I paid eight hundred fifty seven dollars. Anybody have any questions on taxes? That is an easy class. <laughs> yes, sir. How comments make about sales tax? Huh? How comments make about sales tax uh, for for new quartermasters and stuff like that? Make sure you're on top of it because if you're on top of your sales tax in the state of Ohio, they won't pull your liquor license. Well, not only that, you pay yourself tax, you get penalty. If you if you're late, you get you get penalty. Right. Another hard to get a hold of right now. Yeah. But uh, the gateway is the best way to do it. But just 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 keep on top of it. It's something that it should be in the back of your mind all the time. Um, yeah. So just 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 be aware of that that if you don't pay your sales tax and you're having a problem with it, get help because it could have dire consequences for your folks. Yeah, like I say, sales tax have to be paid every month by the 23rd of the day. Your uh, payroll taxes to the federal government have to be paid by the 15th of the, the following month. Um, I know you got an accountant. I, I'm sure they take care of it for you, but you know you want to make sure you don't get behind on your taxes. Any more questions? I don't really think what uh, I think what I was talking about. Oh, but you pay sales tax on so you you don't pay sales tax on the beer and stuff like that you sell. But there is some some things you do pay sales tax on. Like when you when you sell, you buy the beer at wholesale, so when you sell you gotta pay sales tax on it. Now you're in the truth. 
Yeah, I, I get the question probably four or five times a year down at headquarters. Our post is, is tax exempt for a 501c19. Why do we have to pay sales tax? It's because the product that you purchase and sell and cost your, your, your bar is an unrelated business income. You have to pay sales tax. I, I have a question for you, Richard. Yeah. Um, it's a 501c3 organization. They don't have to pay uh, sales tax when they buy tickets. But the veterans do, too. Why is that? There are different IRS tax designations, C3. We are a C19. It's a special tax designation created by the IRS. But the state of Ohio, the bingo life, the instant bingo license law, it's written in there, you have to pay sales tax. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was part of the law. The other reason why is the income you make off those tickets is unrelated income again. Yeah, again, so, unrelated. so that's tax. It would be unrelated income, say, well, 501c3? No, because a 501c3 is a true charity. A C-19, which is what we all are, is a combat uh, organization. Anybody have any questions on taxes or anything? You got to get some, yeah, we're, not, we're not tax exempt for buying stuff for the post either. Well, if, we, if you buy a dishwasher or, or a new stove for your post, you have to pay sales. No, you no. Go, if you go to that store and you give them a tax exempt paper, yes, sir. you don't have to pay sales tax. Well, where, where is the tax exempt paper? You're but don't pay sales tax. Use your tax sales tax vendor number to put on there. If they, you went in, in the office at that low to whatever. But where do you get the sales tax vendor? You're talking about your EIN number? Yes. 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 And you're, but where do you get the tax exempt certificate? There's a black uh, letter on the Ohio website. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Secretary. 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 Yeah. So I was going to be dealt back on the salt, you know, you go ahead and buy stuff at Walmart and whatever. So it's a sales club. Yeah, set up your, uh, and restore your tax. Hey, let's try to keep a lot of the sidebar conversations down because there are questions being asked that might answer what you're going to ask. So try to keep it down as well. Chuck, the last training that we had, there were questions that came up about what can count as department programs, um, such as youth activities or veteran, Ohio veteran military support. Um, and there were a lot of people that had different questions about what, does this apply, does this apply? Can you go over a few of those things? Well, most pro most things, uh, as your post does, is it's in some kind of program. Uh, I, I don't know. This time of year, you got Boys and Locks and Patriot Pen, you got Veterans Day coming up, you got Christmas coming up. Anything you donate to or you help veterans at in any program, you can throw in, a, in one of them programs. And there's only six, so I'm sure you could, you know, find one that uh, you, you need. And, you know. I'm also being on you So, does anybody have a, have a question about programming? What program do you use, not use? I mean, the commander made it pretty easy. You only need four heavy periods in some of the program, too. I mean, in one month, you can be tough for you here. You, just, you need to really let your membership know that anything they do out in the general public, report that to the commander so he can report it on the next one. Yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's what I wanted to also add is like don't just think of it as the things that your post does. Every individual member of your post contributes to the community in some way. So if somebody donated two hundred dollars, if one post member, not even the post itself, but a post member donates two hundred dollars to the Girl Scouts, that can count towards your post activities. Right. You can volunteer. Any of those things can count towards post activities. Or you go get blood or blood drive. Tell your commander or your quarterback, if you're just a member, tell your member, you know, you're out giving blood, you know, that's, that's an activity at your post. Yeah. 
stuff. Are we looking for that form online? Yeah. For the tax exempt form? Yeah. Sales? Yeah, I don't know. Over the page. It's, it's on the department <laughs> website. That's department sales tax exempt. Yeah, it's okay. the uh, blanket, the blanket letters on the department. I mean, I got that by post. I even made a bunch of copies. I forget where I got it at. But yeah, once you find, make a bunch of copies and go to a vendor, fill it out. And your number is your state sales tax number. So you don't get a certificate issued from the state, though? No. No, you take that form in and the vendor and say, hey, I want to be tax exempt. You have to fill it out. You have to tell them that you're a. Uh, 501c19 and say you help that one. And that form is on the, on the yeah. state record. Yeah, he's, that's that's what what yes, it is. Yes, it is. Go to the go to my. You know, the, the VFW of Ohio's website has a like. But you say you buy chairs and buy a table. The blanket letter for all the posts, the C19 blanket letter, is on the department website. Oh, yes, okay. Yes, Our department that, website, the Ohio. That's, that's the, the IRS designation. Yes. But I view, I use that when I go right. to Lowe's. You, you, you can take that to a vendor and say, hey, this, we are tax exempt. Right. And then they have another form that you fill out. The Ohio sales tax exemption form is on. You, you can Google Ohio blanket tax exempt form and it comes right up. There you go. I figured you could find it. You know. <laughs> like I said, once you make a couple of copies, keep a couple of copies at your post. You always have it. In a, in a lot of cases, you can use your IRS determination line. That's what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to go over the questions. Anybody have any questions about this? Or anything about your post you might want to ask? Are there any officers? Any officer? Anybody up here? There's an income and expenditure statement that we use as a form to go for something like the schedule on the bottom. Are we obligated to use that? It's a form that says on one side it's, it's, it's income, it's the other side is expenditure. Yeah. And it's got, are we obligated, and it's got voucher numbers? How, how, you, yeah, you, you can get it at your post meeting. I, I know, but you know how many vouchers we pay every month? There's, there's no room on Well, you know, we, we have two meetings a month, and yeah. I have four pages I have to read my meeting. So we, <coughs> and as a post format, I put everything on it. I mean, we have a team, team manager. They don't have their own checking account. I don't, we have one checking account, general, a big general. Fund. Fund. So everything that goes in there, I read it. Well, how much beer we spend, how much food, payroll, everything, and it's about four pages long. We just lost it all the time. Well, you don't remember the long that time. So yeah, you gotta read. You post me. You gotta read receipts from the first Do so you put voucher numbers on it? That's center column. Well, I use check number. Yeah, you want check number. I have it coded that to my right at the top of the receipt for the person. It goes down to the bottom of the right account. So I might have you might see a, a check from uh, the beer. And I got on the on the right on the right hand side. I have CC canteen. I mean, it, you know, goes in the canteen box. And I use that with code. I know every four that some of you use credit card. And different account. Oh, they use Quartermaster Deluxe. How many use Quartermaster Deluxe in here? We use that Max program. Okay, there's no programs out there and that makes it easy for the Quartermaster. And that, I think that was designed for the VFW, I think, was it not a few years ago? What was it? Max? Yeah, so does Quartermaster Deluxe. The Max is an online version. And that's the only problem, is our post did not run our information online. Okay, the Quartermaster Deluxe is self -made. Yeah, there's, there's, there's ways out there make it easy for you. But yes, you do have to read, you do have to pass out or read your report at the meeting. Yes, sir. The Porter Max Deluxe, how do you obtain that? Uh, yeah, you, you can go on online, type in thomasminisystems.com. Okay. Free it down. Yes, make sure you hit free. Once you get a tax 
that's exempt form when you're dealing with a specific vendor, yeah. like buying your flatware, napkins, and stuff. Uh, should they have that on file? Yeah, once yeah, once you do it, you should never have to do it again. You shouldn't have to do it again. Okay. Yeah. What was the name of that thing? Thomas T H O M A S. Oh, well. and, Mini and if they don't, you might have to give them, you know, keep a copy of it. Dot com. And that's all one word. Yeah, all one word. They should have it in their computer. ThomasMinisystems.com. As far as as tax exemption <coughs> forms. You go to your local vendor, the local hardware store, the local uh, uh, whatever retailer, and most of the times they'll accept the state's forms that you download. <coughs> now you go to like Lowe's, Menards, uh, Walmart, you have you show them your tax exemption certificate. They have another separate form that they require you to fill out for their records, and a lot of times they'll issue a little like a credit card. And when you go back and you want to take a, a tax exempt purchase, you just put it on the card and, you know, and do that. So a lot of the larger retailers have their own requirements. Uh, not everybody's the same. Um, unrelated, but just for general information purposes, I found online that uh, the Podium Edition is now available on Kindle. Oh, for five dollars and eighty cents, so you can have it instantly. So you're you're going to purchase that five dollars and, and mail it out to everybody? <laughs> I already did for me. Like I got a long line. Yeah. Like to me, you said two thousand twenty one the same one we had last year. Same one, just just the cost. Anybody else have any questions? Well, I want to thank you all. Um, Are we done here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jim.
many forms. Uh, I went online to get a, a form if a committee and the chairman have a special meeting, okay, with the command with the commander there, with the commander and their signatures, and they need uh, funding, a, a check from the quartermaster. Is there a box that they can submit and he pays that without bringing it up to the membership? I sort of depend on your profile and how you, you pay. Well, uh, let's just, okay, like, I'm going to get it into the, like these veteran things. Okay. Uh, this, okay. The committee that wants to purchase them for distributing them to the veterans in nursing homes has a meeting and says, okay, we want to purchase so many of these tents. Mm -hmm. And they all sign the voucher, okay, the committee, and the commander signs it. Is there a way they just submit that to? Well, I think when the commander signed it, I would think, yes, you, you could submit that real quick. And it goes to the quartermaster, and the quartermaster should write a check. Yes, I would it think so. It said something like that online, but I couldn't get it. Find out where to get the form. Are you talking in the county of the meetings? Yeah, a special meeting. Well, first of all, the commander has to approve anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'll tell you what we do to our my folks. Uh, any emergency, and the veteran tends not an emergency, that could wait until the next meeting. But any emergency that happens between the meeting, like a hot water heater goes out or something like that. It's up to the quartermaster commander has to get the vote of the three trustees. As long as two trustees say, yeah, let's go ahead and do it, it's fine. But that's in our Bible, that's how it works. Only for emergency stuff. Our, by, our bylaws are to dictate to the monetary. When I was post commander, I could do $2,000 without the approval of the membership. Or what you're saying. Same freezer went out of the stove. Our house committee will spend up to five hundred dollars on things, but that's it all. And a two month period. So you might want to look at change the bylaws and the vote basically. So anything above five hundred dollars for two months, the, the house committee can approve as long as it's something proposed. But they ain't over that. It has to be trustees. I would buy. Like a credit card, you never got a credit card, and he wants to go purchase postage stamps. He types up a letter and he wants to have it printed. Does that all have to go through the membership, or does he just? Most most, most of that stuff's in your post files. Like I think my post commander's allowed to spend up to like hundred fifty dollars on office supplies <coughs> a month, whatever it takes. He needs a new printer. He needs, I mean, Ink and all that kind of stuff. Paper. He's allowed to go do that. That's not like for an emergency. That's for post use. Yes. Yeah, most post, post, post. Yeah, you know, they have a, a certain amount they can spend for office supplies, or if something breaks down, an emergency. Okay. All right. And we're, we're on this quartermaster.
the National Bylaw says all records are to stay at the post and all post equipment to be at the post. Now, some posts don't have a post call, but they do leave things at the quartermaster's house and the commander's house. But if you have a post home, what well, I'm talking about the building, all records and everything should be at the post. And, and, and it's up to the commander. He could have whatever post property is out. He could have them bring it in. Or tell them to bring it in. It, it should be. If you have a building, then you should leave Yeah, it should be in. Unless, you know, unless the bylaw, and your post bylaw says the quartermaster can keep something at his house so he can do things at home, then that's different. He keeps the post bylaw. But if it's not, all things should be at let me, let me bring this up real quick, bring your own bylaws. Post bylaws, and I see it all over the state of Ohio, and I don't know if John's going to cover this or not, but while we're on, those are not official post bylaws unless they have the department commander's signature on it and the commanders and chiefs. The reason for that, they're sent forward to us and national to make sure you don't violate anything that's in this book. That's the reason behind it. So if they don't have those signatures on it, you don't have to. That's something. Also, to answer your question, the quartermaster is responsible for all the monies, but the commander is responsible for all the property. So that's <laughs> what Okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you.